Welcome back folks. As you guys can tell by the thumbnail of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this split grip ice fishing rod. This is a 36 inch medium light. This is going to be just kind of a general all purpose rod for me up here in Maine. This is going to be kind of a bigger bait crappie rod, a bass rod. I'm going to try to get some Lakers on it. It should have enough backbone, you know, to handle some of the Lakers up here in Maine. You know, where it's a medium light, it does have a pretty good backbone. So I'm thinking this will probably be a good lake trout rod too. So let's get right into it guys. I'll start back here. I'll show you guys what I have for components. These two are wind foam grips. I love these. I have these on all my, my open water rods and I have these on one of my other ice rods and these things are really comfortable, especially in the winter time because they help to insulate your hands a little more. Moving up, we have a split grip and these are the Fuji split grips. Um, I really like these, you know, especially in the winter time because so you can put your thumb right here on the, the blank tube and uh, just helps increase sensitivity a little bit. And before we move forward, this green tube here is something I painted. This was a piece of aluminum I had kicking around and it just happened to fit all these components perfect. And it was actually a piece of an arrow shaft that I cut down and uh, I'll show you guys how I paint that a little later. So moving forward, we have Fuji guides and these are the black alkanite guides. So these are a middle of the road guide. And as you can see, I have one, two, three, four. And then I have a Fuji tip top up here. And this is a 16, a 10, an eight, an eight, and an eight tip top. And one thing I wanna talk about before we move forward, there was a little bit of a hiccup mid build here. And the hiccup I had was with my thread finish. All the other rods that I built, I used this Pro Coat rod building thread finish. And what this is, this is a flexible two part resin that you put on your threads after you wrap them. And what happened is my, uh, my hardener, my B side was fine but my part A chunked up and it was unusable. And I've always wanted to try to use some UV cure resin because it cuts time down substantially over turning your rod for eight hours like you're supposed to with this Pro Coat. So I've been wanting to try some UV cure resin for a while and I tried it on this rod. I used the green flex. As you can see, there's a thin, a thick and a flex. And I tried the flex for the guides. So FYI, that's my disclaimer. You know, I have that, uh, that flex resin on here. I'm really hoping that it works well long-term because if I can get away from using the Pro Coat, I'm certainly going to. So again, FYI, that's my disclaimer. Um, if you guys want to use the Pro Coat, I made another video of how to make another ice rod and I'll put a timestamp on the video if you guys want to see how this stuff works. But in this video, I used this solar res uv resin so if you guys see kind of an awkward jump later in the video when i go to do the threads that's why because i was planning on using this stuff i talked a bunch about using this stuff in the next step in the next phase and uh come to find out just as i'm getting ready to put this on that the uh, part a weren't usable so if you guys see an awkward jump that's why and this rod is like i said pretty well universal um here it is with an inline ice reel this is a 13 fishing black betty free fall it's a really nice reel so I designed it so you could use it with this reel or a spinning reel like we have here. This is a Shimano Sahara size 1000 reel. It's a real nice durable reel. It's a great ice reel. It, uh, it fits this rod really well. And this is gonna be a really good ice rod. It fits this 36 inch perfect. So that's the basics of the rod guys. We're gonna get right into it. Um, we're gonna get right into the build. We're gonna start where I started on the handle tube here and then we're gonna move forward through the rest of it. All right guys, so first step is we're gonna paint the aluminum shaft that the handle's made on. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take some sandpaper and I'm gonna lightly score this before I spray my sealer on it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna airbrush some primer sealer on it. This is just straight white. And once that cures, the next color I'm gonna do is fluorescent yellow. And this is just fluorescent Createx. And the sealer is Auto Born Sealer, also from Createx. This stuff really does help the other paint stick. I always like to spray a sealer. All right, so this is the first coat of primer. All right, what I'm gonna do is just speed up the process between the next coat. I'm just gonna use a heat gun just to speed this up a little. Okay, second coat. And just about out. There, that'll work. So I'm just gonna slide it on here. Gotta let this sit for about 20 minutes. 
before I put the paint to it. All right, so been about a half hour. That's pretty well cured. The directions say to let it cure for about 20 to 30 minutes. Got the fluorescent yellow. Gonna try to do nice even coats. Turn my pressure down a little. I'm running at about 15 PSI, in case you're wondering. I'm gonna have to do a couple different coats. So this stuff goes on pretty thin. So I'm gonna get a nice even coat. I'm gonna heat set it. And I'm gonna do another one. You see that's pretty even. And now I'm gonna heat set it with a heat gun. All right. Heat set. All right, made a little adjustment as you can see. Just put this on a screwdriver. Just so we can have a little better control of it. Here we go, second coat. Quick heat set. Quick heat set before we do the third coat. All right, so we are dry to touch. So I'm just gonna let this air cure for about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll put a top coat on it. All right, and the top coat I'm thinking for this, I'm gonna try something new. I always like to try new stuff. I've tried a couple other options and I weren't happy with them. So I'm gonna try this UV Cure Resin. This is Solar Res. This is just a little trial pack. It comes with a thin, a thick, and a flex. The green is the flex. I almost used the green, but this isn't gonna to have to flex at all, so I don't think I need to use that. So I'm gonna use the thin, which is this blue here. I use this stuff for a bunch of stuff around the house. And I'm gonna try it on this, see how it goes. It may work, it may not. So I'm gonna put that on, hit it with a UV cure light, and I'm gonna bring it out in the sun for the full cure. And uh, we're gonna see how this works. It's kind of trial and error. I'm make sure I get a nice even coat on this. And what I'm doing is as I'm going, I'm just trying to spin this so it doesn't sag. Right, this stuff is leveling pretty good. And I think that's good. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate this so it levels out. Okay, we're gonna do a quick set with a light. That's nice and smooth already. Good thing about this UV Cure resin is it cures almost instantly. And I'm just making sure that this gets even coverage. That's nice and solid. Just another pass or two. Then I'm gonna put it in my self-facing window for about 20 minutes. So here's our self-facing window. As you can see, we're getting a ton of sunlight coming through. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna twist it here for a couple minutes. And sunlight coming through a window is more than enough to cure this. All right guys, so it's the next evening. I took a little bit of a break. We've been pretty busy. This is how it came out. It came out pretty good. It's nice and smooth, um, nice and durable. I can't scratch it with my fingernail. And next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna completely assemble this handle section before we put the, the rod blank on. I haven't done anything to this rod blank. I've just uh, mocked up some guides here. So we're gonna completely assemble this then we're gonna get the rod on afterwards. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mock up all these components. And what I'm gonna do is just build up some arbors out of masking tape. That way these things fit all nice and snug. Once I get everything snugged up with the masking tape, we'll put the, we'll put the rod paste to it. And once that sets up, we'll get the blank on. And I like to use two little arbors versus one big one. Because when you use two little ones, it allows extra space in between the arbors for the rod paste to sit and really grab. Okay, that's pretty snug. That's where we want it. You see that's uh, not coming off. And what I'm going to do for extra security is I'm going to score where most of this rod paste is going to be sitting. So I'm going to score here, here, and here. I'm just going to do a bunch of score lines so that rod paste um, gets down to the base material and has something to grab onto. Probably won't be able to see it that well, but I scored that aluminum shaft pretty deep. So that's basically roughly where I want everything mocked up. So I just move this winding check up, and that's kind of where I'm going to start with the handle. I'm just going to make a quick mark right there. This handle, again, I'm going to score this whole section here. You guys probably can't see that white line, but I can see it pretty good. I'm just going to give this a nice score to make sure that has something solid to grab onto. All right, that's perfect. Okay, now we gotta get the first part of the real seat on. And what I have is a piece of this graphite arbor. So what I did, I just took a little bit of that graphite arbor. And I'm not gonna need much. 
and I'm not going to need much on that and I'm actually not going to put any tape on it because that fits pretty snug and now we're going to put the matching winding check on scoring is one of the most important things you have to do because you don't want your reel seat to move okay now we're going to get the top part of the reel seat on make sure this lower winding check is on because this part has two winding checks one on the bottom one on the top and we're just going to score this top part all right make sure that's on and same thing with the arbor this is just that graphite arbor the real seats going down all right all right that looks pretty good it's all spaced out what I'm going to do is just add a couple final marks here and then we'll get the paste on it. All right, so now we're going to add the rod paste. This is the pro paste. This is an A and B. You got to mix these 50 50. And in their tutorials, they don't say it needs to be 100% exact. It's just got to be relatively close. So I'm just going to eyeball these. All right, when I do this, I make sure I have more than enough. I don't want to get into it and have to mix up another batch. So I make sure I have a pretty good amount of that stuff. I'm going to use a fresh piece of plastic so give this a quick mix and again it's roughly half it doesn't need to be identical but it's got to be pretty close you can see that's roughly 50 50. so i'm just going to take a few minutes mix these together and then we'll get it on the rod and you have about a 45 minute work time with this rod paste so you don't need to rush it's been about two minutes and see that's all one uniform color and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the butt section and work my way up and I'm going to leave that winding check and I'm just going to use a cheap paintbrush to spread this around and I want to make sure it's going to going to fill this area pretty good all right so now we're going to take our butt section and we're going to twist this on you will get some squeegeeing effect which is fine. What I do is just kind of work it back, twist as I go. And once I'm ready to seat it, what I'm going to do is just take some off with a paintbrush. So I'm going to get in here and just take off all that excess because it'll just squeeze up over the winding check, which I don't want. I see that's pretty clean. I'm just going to slide that in. And that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is just take a little piece of toilet paper some nail polish remover and I'm just going to remove that excess and we're just going to clean up that extra rod paste all right that's good for now I'm going to go back and do a final wipe down after but for now that's good now we're going to get all this top section off and now we're going to get the handle on all right same thing we're going to put a good amount on the handle so same thing we're going to start slow and just kind of twist as we go. As you can see, that's squeegeeing quite a bit. And we're gonna seat that. Okay, that's good. All right, that's all neat and clean. All right, now we're moving on to our real seat. And what we gotta do with a real seat is we gotta score the inside of it because this is completely smooth. And when we glue everything together, I want to put some score lines on the inside just to give it a little extra durability so we don't get any twisting. Don't need many, just a few scratches in there. And we already pre scored there. So, what we're going to do is now we got to put our paste on. Now, our arbor is going on. getting some rod paste on the arbor and you got to make sure your real seat is facing up obviously I'm going to twist that now we're going to put our winding check on and now we're just going to clean up okay so now we're moving on to the top part of the real seat I'm going to put the arbor on first and I'm going to put my winding check on go rod paste find you don't need to put nearly as much 
on with a graphite All right, arbor give it a spin and these ones I don't have to score inside these have pre these have pre-made score lines I'll try to keep that nice and easy so you guys can see um, and they're pretty deep grooves I can actually feel them with my finger so this one's ready to go all right now we're putting some paste on the arbor all right again you got to make extra sure you're putting your real seat on the right way and actually I'm going to tape the threads much easier to tape the threads now than it is to clean all the paste out afterwards I try my best to twist okay and I had a little bit of movement down there okay winding check going on Setting that, I gotta clean my hands because I just stuck it in that. All right, a little bit of a cleanup. Now we're gonna peel the tape off. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do a quick wipe of all the other components because once that rod paste heals, you're pretty much married to it. Any imperfections you have, you're pretty much married to. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this real seat from an old reel I had and we're going to use this to line up the real seats. We're going to make sure this is completely aligned. All right, guys, so our real seat's pretty much done. It's lined up pretty good. Double, triple checking everything. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it. So far, this is looking really good. And just as an added security, I'm going to run some tape over all these components here just to make sure they stay together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just let this sit. I'm going to try to keep it as relatively level as I can. And we're going to leave it right there to cure for about an hour. All right, guys, so it's the next morning, and uh, everything's set up about an hour, hour and a half after I rod pasted everything. And it came out really good. Everything looks good. I'll just show you guys with a reel. And I think this looks really good with this reel on it. I think it looks really good. You know, the black and green, you know, the black housing of the reel. I think it looks really good. It looks nice and clean. So the next step we have is uh, we got to start working on the rod itself. And there's two ways you can go about this. You can take your handle and you can take your unfinished rod blank and rod paste your blank into the handle. Wait for this to set up, you know, an hour, hour and a half, and then get working on your guides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my guides on first. Um, I'm gonna get my guides on, I'm gonna thread wrap them. I'm gonna put them in my turner. I'm gonna let them turn. And once that's all set up, I'm gonna rod paste it into my handle here. And the reason I'm doing it this way is when you're laying down your thread wrap, you know, you have to turn. And if this is all set up onto my rod here, I don't wanna risk messing up my paint job when I'm twisting on my thread wraps. So that's the only reason why I'm not doing it with a rod, rod paste it into the handle. You could do it that way if you wanted to, but I'm not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get working on the blank. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the spine of the rod. And what that is, is under pressure, it's where that rod is gonna maintain most of its stability and flexibility. So what you do is you, you flex the rod and you turn it. And these ice fishing rods are pretty easy to find. So I'm loading it and I'm twisting it and that's where it snaps into place. Okay, right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this side of the rod just like that. And just for reference, what I'll do is I'm gonna put a piece of tape on just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is basically where my guides are gonna go. They're gonna face where this tape's going. All right, so when I flex and twist, you'll see that that should, should pop right up where it is. See, turn and twist, and it's up. Twist and it's up, twist and it's up. So this is where the spine is. So this is where my guides are gonna orient. My guides are gonna orient up this way because this is where that rod wants to flex, is up where this direction is right here. All right, so now I'm just marking a big line for visual reference. Next step is, this is how far the blank is gonna be in the handle. I do have a little bit of wiggle room that I could go in this aluminum tube, but I think I'm gonna pretty much max this out because this is a 36 inch blank and that feels pretty good. If I slide this out a little bit, it doesn't feel quite right. So I'm gonna keep basically 
basically a full handle length. So I spent a few minutes off camera. I just did a quick mock-up of my guides. And I think this is what we're going to roll with. I'm doing four guides. One, two, three, four, five with my tip guide. And that looks good. The big thing with guides is when you flex your rod, you just want to make sure that your line isn't coming in contact with your rod, which that isn't. That's not even close. So I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm just going to mark the base of all these guide feet. All right, so the next very important step is I'm going to take these guide feet and I'm going to grind this lip off a little bit. This is just so we get a nice, even climb up with our thread. When these come, they come with a little bit of a taper, but I'm going to taper that even more. And you just need a, a Dremel tool with a sanding bit. And it doesn't take a lot of sanding to create a nice, even step. All right, I'm not sure if you guys can pick that up on the camera, but I just shaved the tip off and uh, that's what we need. And I'm just gonna do this to all the other guides. All right, so we're ready to get our first guide on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape the guide onto the blank where our first mark is. And now we're gonna take your thread and you're gonna tape your thread towards the top of the blank. And I'm gonna bring you guys in nice and close for this next part. So now you're gonna wind your thread down towards the butt of the rod, and you're gonna go about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch away from the guide. And this is what's called a locking wrap. I'm gonna wrap over the tag end, and we're gonna wrap towards the tip of the rod. And this is locking in that tag end. And that's good there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that tag end. Some people clip them, I leave them. I feel like it helps the thread to go up onto your guide foot. Completely up to yourself if you wanna do that or not. And if you stepped your guide, and if you stepped your guide foot good enough with your Dremel tool, your thread should walk right up onto the foot. And we're just gonna continue up. And as I'm going, every two or three turns, I'm using the thread to pull downwards. It's going on really good right now. So I'm gonna block the thread so it won't move. And we're gonna take the tape off. All right, I'm just checking my threads and we're gonna continue all the way up. All right, now we're gonna trim this tag end. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save 8 to 10 turns going towards the top. Alright, so now we're going to take this string that we saved earlier. And we're going to try to get this under the line. Okay, now we're just going to wrap up on top of that loop. You guys will see what that's for in just a minute here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is block the line with my finger. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm gonna cut the line and we're gonna try to do this so you guys can see. I'm gonna take this, we're gonna put it through the loop. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab that main line. I'm gonna grab the two tag ends of this here and we're gonna pull that main line down this way and that's what's called the locking wrap. That way there's no knots we have to do. Everything's nice and uniform. I'm just gonna grab this, give that a little bit of a tug. And that's our first wrap. All right, folks, there you have it. There's our first guide, it's nice and neat. I'm gonna leave this tag end on it till I get all my other ones done. I'll do a final tighten um, once they're all done. And uh, just gonna do a double check. That guide's right in line with the spine double checking my white line everything looks good so what i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna do the next three off camera because it's the exact same how i did this one then i'll catch up with you when i put my tip top on all right so what you need for this is you need a tip top and tip top adhesive and some form of heat i couldn't find my lighter in here so i'm just going to use a heat gun going to get this nice and runny smear it on the top and then put your guide on sometimes you have to adjust it a couple times you see that start to kind of move around on its own. That's when I go in, grab a nice chunk of it,
try not to set that on anything because it'll stick to it. And I try to get that tip top on as fast as I can. What I do is I roll and twist it on. I'm just going to let that sit. And then I'll pull the excess off. And we'll see how I did. All right. That feels good. That's nice and solid. It's not moving. I just put a pretty good amount of force on that tip top. And I'm not going to put any thread right here. Some people will put thread up to their tip top. I, I don't. Um, I guess it's kind of up to yourself. But I am going to put a little bit of rod finish up there just to kind of take that step down a little bit. But that's all I'm going to do to the guide tip for this rod. So what we're going to do guys is we're going to take the blank without the thread finish and we're going to rod paste it into the handle. So we're going to get going with the rod paste. I'll pull that out and I'll show you guys how we're going to do it. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add one more arbor to this here in the middle. There's going to be plenty of room for that rod paste to grab. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to scuff up the blank so the rod paste has something to grab onto. I'm just going to try to make a bunch of long vertical marks. Now I'm going to add a few more aggressive ones with the serrated teeth on this little knife here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little stainless steel rod. I'm going to run this on the aluminum just to scrape that up a little bit. Thankfully aluminum scores pretty easy. Alright same stuff as earlier. This is the pro paste. So there's a rough 50-50. And we're just going to mix this thoroughly for a couple minutes. And what I'm going to do is just take this little paintbrush and you want to get a fair amount on here because you want to make sure this rod has more than enough to grab onto. You don't want this to break loose inside your handle. This part's probably going to get a little messy. As you can see, a lot of that squeegeeing off. But what I'm trying to do is, is just twist this and get it to pull in as much as I can. Now what we're going to do is just try our best to get as much of this out as we can before we take that tape off. Let's get this tape off. Okay, now we're going to get this off. Not bad. Not bad for as much as we had. And what I'm noticing is there's a little bit of pressure built up in the handle tube. And what's happened is it's wanting to push the, the blank out a little bit. So I'm going to tape this down to prevent that. All right, so this is what I came up with. I just taped a zip tie onto the blank, taped it onto the reel seat, and put some tape on the handle. And that's enough that it's holding the blank in so I don't have to worry quite so much about that tube pushing out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this every five minutes or so and make any adjustments if needed. All right, guys, so we're ready to put some uh, thread finish on. And like I had mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to be using the Flex Resin. I'm giving this a shot. This is a trial run. This is what it looks like. This is the Flex. And this is also a Flex Resin. The thing with this is it's got to turn for like eight hours, which is really a pain. So this is a test to see how this does. If I can get away with using this UV Cure Resin and cure it in the fraction of the time, I'll continue using this. And we're still going to use my rod turner. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut all these tag ends. We're going to cut these nice and easy. And we're going to take our time so we don't have a lot of frays. Going to use a nice sharp razor blade. Okay, there's the first one. And before we get the finish on, I'm just going to do one quick final check. And everything looks good. So next step is we're going to get the thread finish on. And I'm going to try to get you in nice and close. I'm going to put a pretty good line on. So what I'm doing is just taking my time, making sure this is completely coated. I want every thread, I want every little gap completely covered. And what I'm going to do is just leave each one for a couple minutes to let it rotate, you know, and level out. Everything will kind of self-level. So that one's good. What I'm going to do is just let that thing rotate for a couple minutes before I hit it with a light. And I'm going to watch that for a complete spin. I don't see any air bubbles. Everything looks nice and even. I don't see any fibers of anything in there. So while this second one is leveling, we're going to get this one cured. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just setting this enough to get a nice solid set. And tomorrow when it's sunny out, I'm gonna put it in my window for about an hour. And that will completely cure it the rest of the way. And that is already solid to touch. I really hope this stuff works out good, guys. I honestly do. If I can find a way to get away from that eight hour turn time with a pro code, I'm certainly going to. All right, nothing fancy with a tip top. All I'm gonna do is just kind of cut this step down a little. And this will also help to give the tip top a little bit of stability. Not that I feel like it would come loose, but it'll give it just a little extra security. So just gonna let that level out for a minute and we'll hit it with a light. All right, here we go, gonna lock that in. Should be good. Yep, that's good. All right, guys. So there's the uh, the UV cure resin. I really hope that works. I got my fingers crossed uh, that it works good and it holds up because I'll certainly swap over to that. So definitely excited to see how that turns out. Now this rod is as it sits, pretty much ready to fish. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker. I'm going to put the length and the action on the butt section here. And to be honest with you, this is the first rod I've ever written on. I've never written on a rod. I've never signed a rod. So I just have one of these, I don't know, silver markers, extra fine point paint marker. And I'm going to sign on the top here. We're going to do 36 inch medium light. And I'm just going to put the year that I made it, 20. And first time I've ever done this, I'm going to sign my channel name. Okay, not the best, but I will take it. First one I've ever signed, 36 inch medium light, year 2020. So I'm just gonna let that cure up for a couple minutes and I'm gonna get another layer of that UV cure resin on and this signature will be ready to go. And we're gonna be using the thin resin for this part of the blank, just because it's not gonna have to flex like the guide resin has to. So I'm gonna make sure to get a little bit on the winding check just to help protect that too. So I'm just gonna let this self level for a couple minutes and I am gonna watch it as it goes. I'm just gonna double, triple check everything. So that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna do a quick set with a light. I'm gonna do about three full revolutions. Then I'm gonna bring it out in the sun for its final cure. So we're pretty hard to touch. What I'm gonna do now off camera, I'm gonna bring this out in the sun and I'm just gonna rotate this in direct sunlight for a couple minutes. Then this rod's gonna be ready to fish. All right, folks, there you have it. There's our finished ice rod. Everything's all cured up, everything's set up. And uh, I think it came out great. I'm more than happy with how it came out. I think it looks great, feels awesome. It's nice and comfortable. I think the action's gonna be really good for what I want. It's going to be kind of a good general all-purpose rod. I'll be able to hit crappie with it, perch with it, bass with it, hopefully some lake trout. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm thinking it's going to have enough backbone to catch some lake trout. And uh, I'm really excited to fish it for the first time, hoping to get it out this weekend and uh, catch some fish with it. But we're going to wrap it up there, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.